Mohammed Hussein is asking both of us to uh, whether we've uh, altered our expectations on Miami football with the loss of Rousseau. I will say that I, being kind of a numbers guy, a probability type guy, think yes, enormous talent, one of the very best at his position, maybe the best in the country. But you got to look at the scope of the number of games played. Are we playing baseball for 162 games and you lose Mike Trout? Well, he could mean eight games. Make an estimation. But depending on how the games go, yeah, we don't we don't know if Miami loses to North Carolina by three points, if Greg Rousseau would have come off the edge and had a strip sack with 50 seconds left in the game. We don't know. Uh, but you kind of alter it. Uh, and, and balance it out in regards to the impact of the player. Yeah, he could mean a game. Uh, probability is that he won't mean a full game. But again, we're talking about a limited number of games, 11. So I'm not going to alter, I'm not going to automatically say, well, I was projecting Miami to go eight and three. Now I'm going to go seven and four because Greg Russo's absent. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do the same thing either. I mean, could he be. <laughs> You know, if you're if you're taking a baseball stance, like uh, Mark was talking about, uh, like a wins above replacement kind of a thing, like how valuable is Gregory Russo as opposed to a Jalen Phillips? You know, if you're going one to one, yeah, I'd say maybe over the course of the season a game, but it's like two tenths of a game here and one tenth of a game there. So like, are those couple of plays in this game? You know, like it's things like that. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to depress the over under or whatever I, my expectation was by a full game, but uh, suffice it to say that, yeah, uh, Gregory Russo not being on the roster is a, a, a large challenge to overcome. Uh, but again, that's the nature of college athletics anyway, because you always have guys coming uh, into the program and always have guys leaving the program just because of the nature of, you know, chronology and eligibility if somebody out there has nothing better to do take all of miami's games last year rewatch them watch greg russo's impact and then try to take the average player and see oh russo made a sack there yeah miami was already up three touchdowns that didn't really have an impact on the result of the game and you know measure it all out and you'll have some kind of an idea well there's there's some of that but also like a couple of times like because he has this 19 foot wingspan, he was the one who got a hand on somebody's leg to trip him up. And there's two other guys there. You know what I mean? Like, and it could have been, okay, yeah, they're a half step slower. Could that, could the ball have come out, you know, in, in that half step or like things like that? Or like, is it a thing where, okay, it could have just been anyone? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fluid situation. Yeah, absolutely. That's impossible to measure. You make your calculation. Exactly. I've left uh, Martin's comment up here. Martin joins us on a regular basis. Uh, left him his comment up here uh, because he is respecting Greg Russo's decision, but he thinks Coach Manny Diaz deserved a face-to-face -face meeting instead of a text message in the middle of a press conference. I can see that point. Absolutely. Um if that's how you feel about it. I mean, I think that I, I don't I don't even know because I don't know the backstory. I don't know if, if Gregory Russo was watching it and heard Manny Diaz make that statement that nobody's opting out and decided that was it. You know what I mean? Like, um, no, Jordan Bowman, he's not sick. Gregory Russo does not have COVID or anything. He's stepping away to prevent that from happening. Um, and everything. And again, a face to face meeting does not mean face to face. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, rubbing uh, heads or, you know, foreheads against each other like you're going to fight in a, a 50s movie or something like that. No, I mean, it's just sharing the same space. So, I mean, you could distance. Look, it could have been the two of them on opposite sides of the practice facility with a microphone if, if you want to have face to face. You know what I mean? Like, that's taking the, the phrase a little too literally. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I can I can see, I can see that point of him uh, of you saying that uh, the conversation deserved to have been had uh, face to face as opposed to that. Uh, but I don't know all the backstory as to why the text message was sent. I don't know about, I don't know, I don't know. So uh, I can agree with you, and also not necessarily talk to the other side of it as well. Yeah, on those situations uh, we've seen with. Um the COVID situation and also the racial unrest, uh, a lot of stances made by college football players. And I'm an old school guy. 
that would like to see them uh, attack the issue and the conversation, I should say, the conversation with coaches and teammates uh, behind closed doors. But I'm an old school kind of guy. Things are done a little bit differently these days for one thing. Number two, I try to hold and reserve my full response to those kind of situations as Cam just did when you don't know the entirety of the relationship and maybe other communications were made, we know part of it. Um, so that has to be taken into consideration as well.